Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Rodney, and I'm back, and I wanted to go ahead and talk about chasing Atlanta. All right, so listen. <laughs> this show was a mess, but it like a good mess, <laughs> okay? All right, so listen. Um, and I want to just go, I'm going I'm to wait and say it. I'm, I'm going to wait to say that because it, it, I feel like my I'm proven right, <laughs> no matter if it's chasing Dallas are chasing Atlanta. I'm proven right all the time. I, 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 Y'all have to start paying attention to this stuff because I'm paying attention. I'm gonna go ahead and say some of it. I told y'all these producers are messy. The producers are messy and the cast, they're not mature enough to understand the assignment. That's what it comes down to. The producers are messy, okay? And the cast is not mature enough to understand. Well, half of the cast, most of the cast is not mature enough to understand the assignment. All right, let's go ahead and get into uh, Dominique first. So Dominique goes and she speaks to, um, I guess, a licensed professional, uh, a counselor. Is that what they had the, his title? A licensed professional counselor. I don't think that's the same thing as a therapist, right? I don't know. I'm, I'm assuming not because if so, it, they would have said like doctor or you know, they would have had therapists or whatever. But anyways, his name is Twan Dixon. Um, Dominique starts off with saying that um, he has anger issues. Now, I don't know if Dominique has anger issues or not, but I do know you messy. <laughs> and y'all know I go up for Dominique. I go up for Neenique, but you know, we have to call a thing a thing. Dominique, you're messy. Like a lot of the stuff that's been happening is really and truly because of Dominique. I'm not going to say every, I'm not going to put everything on Dominique, but even last week, I went back and I watched that fight. I just watched it before I came on here. I went back and watched the fight. Quad as it's kept, that was Dominique's fault. Because the truth of the matter is, this is, let me just say this. If Rico had dropped if you ask for Rico's pen, uh, no, Rico asked for your pen, he didn't come, whether he was scared, whether he didn't have no gas money, like you said, for whatever reason, he didn't come. At that point, you should have just let it go. But you wanted the mess to continue at your Good Judy's event, right? That was Dominique's fault. Even though Rico should have kept his cool and kept his hands to himself, the whole thing I started because Dominique walked up to Rico on some, basically, what you got to say now. Um, his family issues. I, I hear where Dominique is coming from. I do. What it sounds like is his family, I guess, um, does not acknowledge or respect his relationship with his fiance. Um, like Dominique said, I accepted your, I accepted your husband, so you need to accept my, me and my man. Because <laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> um, but I think one of the things that Dominique needs needs to accept and set down, right, and you know, draw the line in the sand and let his family know that if you don't respect or if you continue to not acknowledge my relationship, which is very important to me, you will not have access to me and I will not come around. I know that sounds easier said than done, than done. You know, who wants to tell their mother or their family members that basically I will act like y'all don't even exist anymore, right? So I get that it's easier said than, than done, but at some point, if your relationship, and it sounds like his relationship with his fiance means a lot to him. That's probably why anytime somebody even mentions anything close to his man, he spazzes out, right? Because even with Wayne, Wayne didn't say nothing about that boy man that they showed on TV. Wayne, again, not to go backwards, was like, you acting like Troy is your man. And all Wayne, uh, to me, from what I saw on TV, all Dominique heard was my man or man. And girl, it was over from there. So clearly, his fiance is someone who is very important to, important to him. So if we have these functions, if whether it's a family reunion, whether it's whatever, and 
I can't bring my man around because y'all are uncomfortable. Or if I bring my man around, y'all act like y'all don't want to acknowledge us and you know that it hurts me, then I won't come around and you won't have access to me and I won't call you and you won't call me. You see how that works? And again, I know it's easier said than done, but he going to have to put a, he going to have to let his family know you will not continue to disrespect me and the person that I've chosen to, you know, spend the, the rest of my life with. You won't. And you're going to treat my relationship like you treat everybody else's relationship. You didn't even tell me congratulations when I got married, but you told my brother congratulations when he got married. Right? But again, Dominique is going to have to draw a line in the sand and let his family know you won't continue to disrespect me. You won't continue to disrespect my relationship. And if you continue to do so, you don't have to worry about hearing from me ever again. Like he said, I'm not the 17 year old. I think Dominique said he's 30 now. Basically, I'm not that child anymore. I'm a grown ass man and you will treat me as such. I know that's right. That's what I'm basically telling Dominique. He needs to tell his family. Anyways, um... I felt like he was making excuses for his father. You know, he says his father has never been present. He doesn't know how to be a father due to him losing his father. Look, at some point, like, like I get it. Look, my mama had me in high school. <laughs> my daddy and mama, that they, they both, you know, they was both in high school, right? 16, 17 years old. But at some point, it, you, we can't keep making excuses up for people. Yeah, you probably didn't have your daddy. Your daddy probably died. But at the end of the day, at some point, you're going to have to come to terms with that you were a fucked up father. And if you really want to build some type of relationship with your son or daughter, whoever it may be, I'm just saying, talking in general, then you're going to have to do better, right? We can't keep making excuses up for fucked up parenting. Um, so, Troy where the mess start kicking in for me. Now we now we got the serious shit out of the way. I'm trying to understand if we are in therapy, Dominique, this is why you messy and this is why stuff ain't going right because you are in therapy or this counseling session to try and get down to the root of whatever. And instead of you trying to get down the root to the root of to whatever, you call Troy over or Troy say he gonna stop by and y'all have a messy kiki session at your therapy session. What the fuck? <laughs> and then the counselor just sitting there soaking it all in. <laughs> he just sitting there looking. <laughs> really bothered by the fact that Dominique had this therapy session, you know, and he's crying and he's, you know, telling us or telling the therapist, the counselor, his feelings. And then girl, all of a sudden, girl, now let's get to the mess. No, girl, you should have waited for that girl until the next day or listen until you got home. Anyways, child. Um, now, like I told y'all, let's just get into it. These producers are messy as fuck. I've been told y'all about the one who started, who I guess is the CEO, Andario. I told you he was messy as fuck. Even when last year I clocked that shit with Chase and Dallas, when all that shit was going on with Chase and Dallas, and I remember Trey, the skinny one, Trey, he did a live, and I think Andario was in the chat, or Andario had passed a message on to let him know that he was right about Reese G. And I'm like, how are you getting with the the cast about someone he was also part of the cast but about a producer of the show instead of you trying to shut the shit down you staring the motherfucking pot this boy named carl from what y'all told me i don't know if this is true or not correct me if i'm wrong y'all said that he a producer i knew that dominique wasn't i said i don't think dominique is lying somebody told dominique that rico cassadine had a bomb to drop on him i don't think dominique would just pull that shit out of thin air so now they show the text messages of Carl, the guy in the tan jacket, who y'all told me he was a producer. I don't know if he's a producer or not. But if he is, he messy as fuck. Then you sat there and lied on camera and said that you didn't say it. And Rico got the text messages saying that you, I mean, not Rico, Dominique got the text messages saying that you did say it. But see, this is what's going on with Chasing Dallas and Chasing Atlanta from what I have seen. These producers are behind the scenes stirring the pot. Basically trying to make sure they can get some drama, you know, started. I understand it. I get it. They do that same shit at uh, uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta. All the other reality shows on TV, it's the same fucking playbook, right? We're going to plant seeds, 
do X, Y, and Z. But see, the difference between those girls and these girls are that those girls over there, some of them, most of them are mature enough to understand that bitch at the end of the day, this is a show. These girls get so caught up and then when they, 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 they want to be like that girl, but when they get caught up in the mess, the only way they can talk themselves out of the mess is starting is to bring up production. Have you noticed that? Anytime the girls get caught up or tripped up, their go-to is, well, production. <laughs> and it's like, girl, you probably were, you were in on it. Kind of like, not to go backwards, kind of like with Chasing Dallas. When what's his name? The one who got into a Reese G? Marquez? I can't remember his name. The one who got into a Reese G, I know the one he threw like a chair at Reese G one season. He threw some ice at Reese G one one season. You know who I'm talking about. It sounded like he was in on the lies and the fuck shit until it turned on him. And then he started getting a bad reputation. Then it was, well, Reese G. And it's like, well, girl, you were in on it too. You were in on the, on the fuck shit. And now since you got the bad end of the stick and it's looking like you're the bad guy, now you want to start saying, well, Reese G wanted to get together and do X, Y, and Z. And it's like, girl, you agreed to it. I feel like that's what's going on on this show. Y'all get the, y'all let these producers come to y'all face because they do want a hit show. And then when y'all get caught up into the shit, then it's all the producer said, right? When the truth of the matter is, even in this case with Dominique and Rico, if Rico had said shit to you that night at, at the event that um, Jay, what's his name? Troy, that Troy threw, you should have dropped it. But you wanted to cause a scene so bad that you walked up to Rico and then the person who you said told you sat there and lied in front of everybody. So now you got to come back and then show text messages to try to prove that Carl was the one who told you what he said he didn't say at the goddamn, at the fight. It's a mess. Y'all keep, y'all see what I'm saying? Anyways, girl. Um... But again, it just goes to, to, to wrap it up and put a bow on it. Dominique wasn't lying. Those producers are messy as fuck. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> um, girl, what Dominique said, I ain't never even been maced by the police. <laughs> I said, girl, what? <laughs> um, Rico. Rico Cassidine and uh, Ike, had, they uh, were doing the song. Um, Rico tells Troy, not Troy, okay, there's too many people on this show. There's too many motherfuckers on this show. Rico tells Ike, girl, slash Array. Girl, I don't know that boy's name. Girl, like I said, I don't know if he's running from the cops. I don't know why he got so many names on this show. Are you going to buy, are you gonna go by Ike or are you going to go by Array? It's one. We just need one name. One, okay? Um... It's already 50 motherfuckers on this show. Girl! Um, so Rico tells Ike that from what Oliver said, Rico hit him. Rico with the K hit Rico Cassadine. Oh, uh, Rico Casserole, as Dominique likes to call it. Bitch, I was watching that scene when I tell you that episode last week was a key key to me. <laughs> he was like, bitch. The two funniest things and not two other for nah, it was some funny shit that happened in that episode. Well, two other things that stuck out the most to me, he was like, We have a Rico, we have a Rico with a K and a Rico Casserole. <laughs> and then when Rico Casserine was like, I don't tell you how to die flat iron. <laughs> When he said, I don't tell you how to, uh, when he said, I don't tell you how to die calm and flat on those poodles. <laughs> ah, God, God, that show was amazing. I was cracking up, girl. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Last week's episode was funny, funny as hell. Whenever uh, Willa hit um, somebody car, somebody was like, a Nissan! <laughs> Last week 
think I was told it was a kiki. It really was from beginning to end. It was a kiki. <laughs> it was a kiki. That was probably one of the funniest episodes I have seen over Chasing Reality in a long time. <clears throat> Anyways, child. Um, so what it sounds like Carl is saying that Jay is saying Rico slept with Dominique's man. Girl, girl. I hope that part ain't no producer. And if he not a producer, girl, y'all mentioned him too much for him not to be a part of the show. So I'm almost thinking that what y'all told me about him being the producer is correct. Um, Hold on. Oh, so Oliver, Quez, and Julian, girl. Julian is the counselor. I had braces before just like that. But I don't know why his braces was getting on my nerves, girl. All I, every time they showed him, all I saw was teeth. All I saw was teeth and metal. That's it. Girl, I said, girl, he cheesing too. Anyways, so they go to therapy. This is just me. I really don't understand therapy for people who have only been together for a year or two. How long have Oliver and that boy been together? It ain't been that long. I don't. Girl, if you're already in therapy after a year or two of dating, honey, just call it. Girl, just throw it in the trash. Girl, y'all already y'all already need therapy. <laughs> um now Oliver says one of the things that they need to work is compassion. I feel like Oliver meant understanding, but he said compassion. Basically, if a person is if you're upset about something and that person doesn't know why you're upset, um, or doesn't grasp um fully, you know. I guess the full picture of what you're trying to say or what you're trying to, you know, give or tell, then you should have some type of compassion to go towards that person for not, I guess, understanding. Again, I think he meant understanding, but he's in compassion. Um, Quez said, and I never realized this, but Quez is cute. <laughs> girl, he's been on the show a couple of times, but I never paid attention to him until he was in there. I was like, oh, girl, he's kind of cute. Um, but he said that uh, he said that he doesn't listen. And that his biggest thing. Now, this is why I want y'all to listen to what Quay said. That's why I said, girl, I got something to say about this relationship. And we go tell us we, we tell the truth about the straight ones. We gotta tell the truth about the gay ones. Okay. Um, he said his biggest thing is when I guess Oliver's biggest thing is when he cuts him off. That's what Quay said. His biggest thing is when you cut him off. That's what Quay said. Okay. Um, what it sounds like to me, I'm just gonna be honest with y'all. It sounds like Oliver was over there taking care of a nigga. That's what it sounds like to me. It sounds like Quez girl had that had the had the line that the niggas use when they don't have no money or they trying or they trying their hardest. You know, I guess when the world shut down in 2020, y'all know what I'm talking about. When it shut down, I guess Quez, you know, finances became an issue for Oliver. Um. Hold up. For him, it was great. You see? Y'all see? Y'all, I, I don't know if Quez ain't shit, but listening to, from what they said on this show, it sounded like Quez could be an ain't shit nigga. I don't know. But <laughs> he's saying it was great. Oliver said it was finances. But also, if you, if you listen, if you read between the lines, it sounded like Oliver was also taking care of the nigga. Quez, he bought Quez a one a, a plane ticket back home. He had already checked in and everything. Quez decided not to go home because he wanted to stay in, in Atlanta and start all over. AKA ain't got shit to go back to. When I tell you, bitch, this sound like a straight. This sound like some shit that Keisha and Pookie would be in. Girl, it'd be the same thing. Only difference is, girl, either it'd be two niggas or a nigga and a woman. That's it. Girl, it sound like Oliver over there taking care of a whole grown ass man. Bitch. And he and it was great for him during the shutdown. Of course it was. Cause you weren't paying for shit. <laughs> it sounded like Miss Oliver was coming out of her pocketbook. <laughs> Girl. Feeding you and sending you back home. <laughs> okay? That's what it sounded like to me. Am I making this shit up? Girl. Um this is why I think I, th I think that I don't know. Now, this is just what I think. Or this is what I could see. I could see Oliver and that boy over there turning his apartment up. And I'm not talking about fucking. I'm talking about fighting. Girl. 
Oliver, well, he was doing all this clapping. I said, oh my God. That's a, that's a tad bit disrespectful, <laughs> right? Right? Like the therapist said, you know, it could be emotional abuse on both sides. It sounds like Oliver has a mouth on him. It sounds like Oliver could be verbally abusive towards Quez. But I mean, girl, if you're paying all the motherfucking bills and buying plane tickets that clearly are going to waste, then you might have an attitude too. <laughs> Just say, I just said they put the shit on TV for us to review. Girl. <laughs> um, it sounds like Quez knows what to do to push Oliver Buttons. Again, if you go back and watch it, Quez says that Oliver hates to be interrupted, but he kept interrupting him. He, if you already know that's the thing that sets him off, then why do you keep doing it? Because you know that's the thing that sets him off. Now, some people will say that Oliver was dramatic. He was doing too much. And maybe that's true. But also, Quez knows that that's the thing that's going to set him off. So that's why he keeps doing it. Because you said out of your own mouth when y'all first started that he hates for people to interrupt him. So if you know that and you already acknowledge that, then why do you keep doing it? This relationship is a hot ass mess. Girl, when you start talking about how you were with this person and you went to a dark place and you didn't want to work and didn't want to go out and all this stuff, and this is what this person brought to your world, then you need to leave that person where the fuck they at. It's that simple. I know some people are going to say it's easier said than done when you're in love, but clearly it's not right. If everything, and then Oliver has already said that when the person, when, when Quez, I guess, when they broke up or when he left, everything went back to how he loved, you know, the way that he loved, uh, the way it was before Quez. If this person brought all of this to you, and then when this person left, it finally got back to where you wanted it to be. And then when this person came back, it brought nothing but that dark cloud again. Sweetie, you've already told yourself what the fuck you need to do. Girl. All of a sound like a woman in a fucked up relationship. But again, in real life, girl, these straight relationships don't be no different than the gay ones. Hello? And can I say something? This is no disrespect to nobody because, girl, quiet is kept to me. I think we all act the same. Not all of us. Some of us have more masculine mannerisms than others. But Oliver really got a bad going around here talking about it. <laughs> girl, like, the way he try and talk down, not talk down, but the way he try and act like the other girls are just women. I'm not trying to say nothing because Quez is cute, right? But Qu you acting like Quez is on some DMX, Tupac, Trey type of shit. Quez ain't no different than the rest of the girls. But the way Oliver be trying to act is, girl, I, mean, I got me a man all. Uh, the, 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 these are women around me. Girl, all y'all the same? All, all of us got the same mannerisms. <laughs> Quez ain't no different than me, him, 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 Troy, Rico with a K, Rico Cassidy, girl, Dominique, <laughs> girl. One might be more flamboyant than the other, but at the end of the day, girl, you everybody know that it's a flick of the wrist. Everybody, everybody can spot that we got a broken wrist. Everybody can spot that some of the girls may walk with an arch in their back. Some of them may walk with a little twist. Some of them may, girl, hold their S's out. <laughs> Come on for holding the S's I, all right? Putting the S on everything, all right? And, and tongue popping, like I be doing. Anyways, um, <laughs> Oliver, girl, Oliver wanted Quest to come chase after him. Girl, Oliver got up, left, girl, came back. Girl, I think he walked out again, came back. <laughs> Oliver, sit your ass down. You ain't going nowhere. Girl, at the end of the day, girl, I guess they're just going to work. I guess they're not together. Is that what y'all got from it? I guess Oliver don't want, really want to be with him, but they should still work on... Girl, let the shit go. Y'all, if y'all, either y'all together or y'all not. A year or two of a relationship, you already in therapy, is a, is a sign to me. Then on top of that, girl, we're going to break up and not be together, but we still need to try to... Girl, cut, cut your losses, girl. Anyways, um... Oliver threw an event. The event was cute, bitch. I can rap. Girl, what's your baby? The girls is talented. I ain't gonna lie. Baby, the girls in Atlanta are talented. Girl, the girls be singing and rapping. Ike was my favorite one, though. Bitch, when Rico got up there and started singing that song, bitch, I was up here. 
Yeah! I don't know what song. I need to go. I need to go stream it. Um, I don't know if it's new or old, but that song was cute. That Rico was. Um, that Rico was Rico Casadine was rapping. Um, girl, when Troy was screaming, when Ike was rapping, bitch, I was. <laughs> um. Okay, Cameron and Jay. Here go another one. I'm sorry. I told y'all about Jay. This is what it come down to. I, this is what I think, girl. First of all, you know what's so crazy? I don't pay attention to none of these girls outside. That's no Tino Shade. Um, what I'm saying is like, I don't... Whenever they do like the lives after the uh, after the show, I don't really go watch them. Because it's kind of like I'm really not interested in them like that. Like, that. like I'm inter interested in the show. But as far as like watching them talk about the live or talk about the show afterwards. Mm, not really. I tuned in for a second for like Troy's and Dominique's and then something told me to tune in last night and I went back. It was already posted. And girl, I saw and I started reading the comments and I saw that, Dom and, that Jay and what's his face? Cameron was going back and forth in the live and somebody put the time stamp and it started like at 15 minutes something like that baby so basically come to find out jay and cameron was fucking <laughs> okay now this is why i say jay ain't shit girl and i think this is, i think and i think jay is mad at the response that he's getting from the viewers because now it even make it seems it makes it, jay seem even worse to me because you and Cameron was fucking. And let me just say something. Everybody just done fuck somebody before and it, and it was just that, right? But it does seem strange that you've had at least five sexual encounters with this person. Then you get on a show that they're a part of and the first moment you get to throw this person under the bus, you did. Jay acted a goddamn fool at that massage day thing that him and Oliver threw. And then to find out that, again, you have been fucking this person or you were fucking this person. And then outside of you fucking him, y'all have hung out a few times. And that was your response to him sending some flowers. And then, you're, then you say you thought the flowers were going to be towards you or Oliver and it was going to be a little shady. But you got pissed off because the I guess he was talking about Troy and other people and... Troy, Kendra, um, Ike, and Aaron, they haven't said anything anything about you. This is what I've been saying about like Drew, Jay now. They are too involved. Like in real life, Cameron has been on this show since season one. It is five seasons. So I don't know how Jay can come in and tell Cameron what his relationship with these people are on the show that he just got on this season. Now, I know some people might say that Jay could know these people outside of the show, but to me, if it didn't happen on camera, then I don't give a fuck about it. If the viewers haven't seen whatever the fuck y'all talking about, then it doesn't matter. And it didn't happen for us. You see what I'm saying? So for Jay to come in and say what he said and for Cameron, Cameron told him, you're new to the group, so you don't know. And that's the first thing I was thinking about when he even started bringing up Kendra and Troy. You don't even know. You just got on the group. Just like Drew. Drew, she's too involved. Y'all just got on the show five episodes ago. <clears throat> Cameron been, been here since episode since season one. How the fuck y'all gonna tell Cameron about his relationship with these people. He's been dealing with them longer than y'all have. I'm confused. Um, one minute he was saying that, oh, I never said that I'm using you for a storyline, that you're using me for a storyline. I didn't say that. And then, girl, five seconds later in the confessional, he's like, oh, yeah, you are using me for a storyline. Girl, <laughs> what? The girls on here be lying. And it be a necessary lie. Like, everybody lies. But it's like, what is your motivation to lie? Why are you lying? And then, to me, I'm going to be honest. The receipt that Jay showed about Cameron and the storyline, it didn't... This is what it comes down to. It sounds like Cameron knows a lot of these people because he's introducing these people to the show. And then when they get on the show, it's kind of like, bitch, I don't fuck with you like that. Girl. It's kind of like, let's pick... It's kind of like, let's... It's, like pick on Cameron Day. I don't know you like that. 
I don't fuck with you like that. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm on the show. And now you've introduced me to the group. Now it's okay, nigga, fuck you. That's what it's given. That's what it's given. Um, but the story, but and again, I, I don't know. I just want everybody to stop talking about fucking storylines. Like, yes, I get it. Everybody should have a personal storyline. I completely understand that. But y'all are on an ensemble cast, okay? I don't like it. Like, I... So, you using me for a storyline. Girl, you just got on the show. Girl, like... Y'all see what I'm saying? And it's not me trying to be... It's not even me trying to be mean or shady. Like, you just got on the show and you're telling someone who's been here since season one that they're using you. Someone who just got on the show five episodes ago that they're using you for a storyline. Wait. Yes, he did hit you up, and yes, he said something about y'all filming together. But you really think that 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 you filming together was gonna be the storyline for the entire season, girl? That what what you showed in the text message could have been a scene, and bitch, they could have been on to the next. Cause quiet as it's kept, how often have we seen Cameron and Jay even talk about? whatever Jay showed in the text message. That one time at Rico Chappelle's um, fabric place or whatever you call it, his business. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It sounds like Jay, you use, it sounds like you use Cameron. Because again, I don't understand how you've been fucking somebody five plus times from what you said on the live. But then, girl, your very first thing is to talk shit about this person in front of the group even though you knew that he was sending the letters, sending the flowers, but you thought the flowers were going to be for you or, or Oliver and it was going to be a little bit shady. So you were expe you were expecting the flowers, but then when the flowers came and the shade wasn't towards you, but it was towards somebody else, that what made, that's what made you mad? Do y'all hear the shit that be coming out of these people's mouths? He was mad because the flowers got sent and he was expecting the flowers to be towards him and Oliver and to be a little bit shady. But once he found out the shade was thrown towards somebody else, that was that's what pissed him off. <laughs> bitch, when Oliver, bitch, when Cameron got up and said, I still need you, to, when, when Cameron got up and told him that he still need, I still need you to send me my wine and started laughing. <laughs> I'm sorry, Cameron was eating Jay ass up. He was. And now that I think about it, I don't think, it, it sounds like it's some holes and might be some holes in Cameron's story. But for the most part, I'm with Cameron on this. Now that I'm adding up what Cameron said on the show and what happened on Oliver's Live last night, now it makes sense. And I think that Jay is really, really pissed off because of the response from the viewers. But it's like, girl, you did it to yourself. Y'all come on to these shows instead of trying to just be your true authentic self and just go with the flow. It's like y'all trying to create a moment. And now it's kind of like now the hat, the, 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 you know, you let the cat out of the bag and it's like, oh, we was fucking blah, blah, blah. Girl, that even make it worse. Girl, not to say you got to be in love with somebody who you fucking, but girl, you was fucking this nigga. And girl, y'all been hanging out outside of the fact that you've been fucking and you still acted the way you acted at the goddamn massage day. Girl, where? And then for you to come into a group to someone who's already established in this group. Been here since season one. And for you to act like this person needs you for a storyline. No. <laughs> Anyways, child. Shout out to uh, Chasing Alana again. The producer's messy as fuck. I feel like the cast members, girl, they want to be that girl. But when things don't, go their, don't, things don't go their way, they all of a sudden start throwing the producers under the bus who messy as hell. And then they start throwing each other under the bus because they can't handle the reaction from the viewers. Right? Anyways, I'm gone. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.